you're talking. So I can't. You're Welcome to the pot house, the greenhouse, the gatherings <laughs> show. We have fun. Yay. Welcome to the green gathering. <laughs> the gather green. Oh, wait. Okay, it's done. Here it is. <laughs> Go green. <laughs> Welcome to the Gathering Greenhouse, a podcast to help us grow together. Yes. Y'all just yes. witnessed David this right now. David hyped hey. up on coffee, but he does not have coffee in his cup right I'm now. Not hyped up on coffee. I haven't even I haven't hyped even, up on life. I'm ex- is just, life good I right am now? I'm so excited that you got the intro right. Oh, <laughs> that's all I needed to do. Well, you, you, made, you made David feel more conscious last week about not smiling, gonna... so David's having but to you, like, smile on purpose you, now. You know I like details, right? I'm a detail person. Like I like obsess over details. I am aware of that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Okay. Well, we got the details well correct done. this morning. We can be we're done then. And Th- thanks well, for I, watching. <laughs> this and might have speaking, been our best and speaking of Perfect. growing together. Yes. My kids are growing up. You're Kids are growing up um, today. today. <laughs> Is anybody's kids like <laughs> well, not growing yeah, up? Right, like that's yes. what they do. <laughs> like, well, yeah, Benjamin Button. Oh yeah, Benjamin Button. <laughs> they're growing down. Did, have you guys seen that? I movie? mean, they're still yep. growing. That- he was still growing up because he did. No, I mean, reverse. Drunk. Yeah, but his age was was older. No. Yeah. No. I mean, yeah, what? This, no. this is just, that's how life works. This just goes to the show. The longer you're that around, the older you get. Doesn't matter how you look. When you reject the realities <laughs> and the truth that God like created, things just get confusing. Uh huh. And you know it gets messy. So you know. So that's like Benjamin like you basically you just made the point that that's a movie that didn't make the point it thought it was making. Exactly. I didn't care for Benjamin Button. I did not, no, not like the movie that much. It was a little creepy. <laughs> it was just yeah. like the CGI wasn't quite yeah. good enough. <laughs> yeah. I, where, where were you going with that? <laughs> um, I was going, I was Our leading into a grow- game. I was leading really into grow- a game okay. here. So All today right. was All right. first day of school. All right. Um, got both kids off. This is, it's a first for us that our kids are all day school. Did you cry? I did not cry because it's, you know, first day of did all day celebrate? school is not that big of a milestone. <laughs> it just makes my schedule a little less crazy because I don't have to figure out, oh, what what meetings do I need to do when throughout the week? I just have mm-hmm. more flexibility now to, yeah. to do all the other things do you, that I need to do. Do you have like a tradition of where you take a picture? Yes. Where do you take a picture? On the front porch. Okay. Or by... The bush. <laughs> that is not a <laughs> or or. Well, I don't know. I'm not the yeah. one taking the pictures. Right. I see. Yeah. I see Maria doing. Both. So we always we always took a picture first day of school in the driveway. Yeah. Right in front of the cars, which is kind of cool then because you look at over the years. Your car you see got a little more dings. Well, got <laughs> our new car. <laughs> Do different cars car. like like from when they were oh, really? really little. You know, and we had the minivan. Yeah. And, and then we had I the, the Sequoia. I haven't grown into the minivan yeah. yet. We should still. just skip it. Just go right <laughs> to the go right to the Sequoia big SUV. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So what's the game? Yeah. So I was my segue is taking a long time here, but since since kids are you ever starting been on a thing, Segway tour, I've not. Segways it's, are awesome. Do I we feel have, like do we you have lose some cool here? points just being on one of those things. No, look so, no, no, no. One of my favorite movies you look is so, Paul uh, Blart. Pa- yep. Yes. 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 Yep. That's what I mean. That right there. Explains no, the segue. I'd hang out with that guy. He's cool. <laughs> he is funny. He seems cool. So he we took his job a little too seriously. We did a segue <laughs> tour in Chicago. Yeah, and it was really cool. Yeah. That, do they have them around here? Yes, in Cincinnati they do. I've seen them. Like a tour you can take, yeah. or you mm-hmm. just? Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Like you just go around along the river, probably. Um, you know what they need to do is they need to combine. Like I said, I've never been to on a segue. Food tour with the segue tour. I'm sh- That's sure. That's a really hard thing to drive in a. No, you, you just that you stop at the restaurants. You just they'd have to change a little because you couldn't have alcohol, obviously. <laughs> that would make the segues a little more fun. Mm. So. All right, what's the game, Steve? Uh, well, so I was still trying to explain where I'm going with this. Yes. <laughs> New things first. So today we're going to be playing a game called Famous Firsts. So okay. I'm George going Washington. to ask you a question, and I have a lot of questions here because I'm going to see. You know, I'm going to try to change it up depending on how savvy you are are on famous Ooh, first so this is savvy this is a uh one on technology when was the I last time you used that word savvy i don't know tech savvy how That's I, the only I don't time know I've how heard. i would remember even when i said that last i don't think so, tech savvy is a word anybody used to describe me 
Well, although when I was your kid's age, it was. Um, right? Some you of had, this stuff you had a is from for most people. So, you know, oh, I was like, I, say, I was building websites with HTML. Like I write my own code. Wow. Yeah. So when I was your age and the other pastors were my age, they didn't uh-huh. know nothing about computers. They were still writing on stone tablets. <laughs> And now you write on a tablet. That's right. <laughs> but it's an iPad. Yeah. All right. Go okay. ahead. All right. Okay. Um, should I start with an easy one here? Of course. Okay. So let's start with an easy one. Um, who, or no, sorry. In what city was the first skyscraper built? Define skyscraper. A, a, a building that scrapes the sky. I mean, I, I want to say New York. But I don't, I don't I, know. It seems it seems like it would be New York, mm. but I'm not sure about mm. that because I don't know how you're defining like skyscraper. So I mean, you could be talking about like an ancient cathedral or something, and I mean, you're going do, back do we count to like the pyramids? England. It's or, not or that. Paris. Long. I'll tell you that. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. Can I ask one one question? Okay. Sure. Is it in the United States? Yes. Okay. Um. So I, I because I, we're I number lean, one in everything, right, guys? Come on. So I'd lean towards Philadelphia, maybe, but I, I know for a long time there was a law in Philadelphia. Mm. Did you know this that Over you couldn't build a building Independence taller Hall? than yeah than the Liberty Bell? That's so like well, I know DC there's I know that there's no and... capital allowed to be built taller than the Washington Memorial, but Texas like made it like three feet taller because yeah. you know Texas. Texas is Texas. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go with Chicago. Okay, John, what do you think? I'm going to stick with New York. Okay, you're wrong, John. I'm sorry. David is correct. Dang. Good job, David. That's one point for David. It's because you had that tour in it's Chicago. The, it's, it's just because the Midwest is sneakily Mid-best. better than both of the coasts. <laughs> Bonus question. <laughs> what, building, uh, what building was it? Oh, I don't even know that. Um, <laughs> um, so again, you know, this is tough because what makes it a skyscraper? Like, I... Like, is the Sears Tower the first skyscraper? No, it's not. No, I wouldn't not. think so, right? No, 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 no. So, because the Flatiron Building is considered a skyscraper. I know that. That's a famous one, too. I'm going to go with Trump Tower. <laughs> <Nope>. Good answer. <laughs> Good answer. The, <laughs> let's see. I'm going to guess the Chicago Tribune. Nope. Okay. Oh, it's the, the water one. tower place. No, oh, it's really? definitely not the water. That's not that even that tall. <laughs> what is it, Matt? Not the water tower what itself. Is it? It okay. Is. There's a water tower building? Yeah. Okay. It is. It's like a six story. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't the know. The home life insurance company. The, of course, an insurance company. Oh, I knew that. What? I've definitely heard that before. <laughs> it took me a while to figure out that the that the Great America Ballpark was not named after America. Yeah. It's actually named after an insurance company. Yeah, it's always an insurance yeah. company, right? <laughs> They're making they're making tons of money. So another thing to do if you go to Chicago yes. is they have an architect sure tour. Yeah, I've like heard you of go that. on the river on a boat and it's really cool. So all right. Okay. All right. Um What city or what let's say what state was the first human powered flight? It's another easy one. Human powered. Human powered flight. I mean, we were both going to say North Carolina, mm-hmm. right? But human powered. But the human powered thing has like us a thrown a, a little bit. Like human the, powered flight. Like no engine. Took the bicycle over a jump, or it just means no engine. It's like an. Was the Wright brothers human powered? I I can't give more clues this to that messing, because that would be answering. Yeah. So I don't know if their first fl- <laughs> like. <laughs> their first flight was actually in North Carolina or just the first significant flight? Because I'm not much of a, a date and history it's fan. This, it's this human powered thing that's <laughs> we, messing with me. I know. It's either it's, e- it's either it's either Ohio or North Carolina. It is North Carolina. Okay. Because when they came back to Ohio, they put the engine in it. Mm, okay. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. So you know that they did that so that er- multiple states could claim first in something. <laughs> they all want to be first. And only some of us are right. Well, because the North Carolina license plate actually says first in flight, right? It does. And we, ours says what? Birth birthplace of aviation. of aviation. Which the, the Wright <laughs> brothers weren't born there, but... They were born in Indiana? Aviation, the, right? the aviation, you know, field itself. Well, it's, it's like a Illinois claiming Lincoln. Right. Everybody you know. claims Lincoln. Yeah. We're the state of Lincoln. Okay. <laughs> okay. Indiana which country no first introduced democracy? 
uh, Greece? Is, I, I think it's Greece. But you are correct. Yeah. You are correct on that. Who wrote the first bill to explicitly allow <laughs> <laughs> religious freedom in the West? So this is in having the West? To be, so this is going to be... US. Yeah. It is in the United States? Or is it... No, no. who? Who wrote? Like, who is in what person? Yes. In the United States, though? Yes. Okay. Wrote a bill. Wrote a bill. Uh, it's a bill. It's not. It's a bill. It's the not necessarily an bill. amendment. It's a first bill to because allow religious freedom <sighs> in the I'm West. I'm just a bill. Yes, I, I'm I lean towards Madison. Bill. John, you're really good at that. Thank you. I actually, that's how I got my start. I was just, know. I was just thinking <laughs> the other that day that, that everybody needs to rewatch that to, to understand how government works. Wait, that their government works. <laughs> <laughs> I need a better how, word for that. How government <laughs> attempts to. <laughs> how government is supposed to function. Function. That's yeah. a good. I, I I don't know that this is right. I lean towards Madison. Mm. Um, if mm. I don't get Madison right, I, I'll I, say I'll just say Adams because that's another name I know. From I don't back think then. it's Adams. And there's two of them. So <laughs> so the, the, here's there. here's the dilemma, right? Because <laughs> before we had a constitution, we had the Articles of Confederation, and bills had to come after the Constitution. Right? Well, I don't so know like, that that's true. I don't see. I don't. I'm not real well versed in how the Articles of Confederation worked. Now the problem is when the Constitution mm. got ratified, the first ten amendments were a part of that's it. John. Yeah. Right? You should know this, John. <laughs> I should know so this. the first <laughs> I don't know why you so, don't. So in those in those I first ten amendments, you have the you know freedom of religion, well, freedom of assembly. Didn't join the Confederacy for a long time. We didn't join the Confederacy at all. What See, are you talking about? There we go. Even, that's why that's not still even waiting. what we're talking about. We're still waiting. It's like my state's redeeming fact. <laughs> that's like a hundred years later. Okay. So anyways, yes. all that all that to say, the Ten Amendments mm -hmm. that were in, inserted into the Constitution were really driven by Madison. Yeah. But there were others involved. So maybe Patrick Henry? And then mm. the other guess I would have would be Hamilton. Okay, you did name any of them. Okay, so who is it? Do you have any type of guess? Did you already guess? Uh, I don't know. Okay, Thomas Jefferson. That was going to be my next <laughs> guess, but... He's my least favorite founding father. Really? Even, why, if I thought why is he would, even if I thought he was the answer, why is I, he your least I, favorite? I, I wouldn't have guessed him. He, he did some pretty important who, things. Yeah, I'm not the him. whole reason. <laughs> uh oh, do we get David on a rant? The whole reason that we have a media that functions as an arm of the government. Yeah. Right. So you have you have dueling media sources that serve only to help their political side win. Thomas Jefferson started that. Thomas Jefferson utilized the media to run a smear campaign against John Adams when John Adams was the president so that he could beat John Adams mm. in the next election. The reason John Adams was not a two-term president is because Thomas Jefferson did a smear campaign through the media um, to so that he could win the election. Mm. Mm. You know, He's also the guy who really brought in the two-party system. He was the first guy that really ran on a party. So he, he did a lot of things that set us down a road the exact opposite of where George Washington wanted us to go. So he did do a good job on the Declaration of Independence, though, given that. Does anyone know what year? Is that, I'm not even sure that's really true, though. Oh, no, we have no idea. No, tell us. I want to know. 18, oh. 1777. Nope, 1786. Oh. It was, it, it was first written in 1777, and then first. Oh, I see. I knew it was one of those. And first presented in 1779. But, but that's that sounds home. so. But the, that's, that's important. Like, those are important dates mm -hmm. because those two dates, when it's written and first presented, predate the Constitution. Yeah. Yep. But the ratification of it postdates the Constitution. Yep. So it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. There. Confusing. Very, we could really very, talk very a long time about no, this. No, we couldn't. <laughs> Next question: what, When was the first smartphone launched by Apple? What year was it? Oh, give, 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 give John a little extra help. Give me some extra. Lean towards oh. the technology with John. I'm going to say 06 or 05. 2008. Oh, my gosh. You guys are both so it's close. Seven. Seven. It's seven. It's seven. seven. Ah. <laughs> Did a good job there, though. I remember I wasn't. I, remember I could iPhone. not get it because I had Verizon and. I couldn't switch off Verizon because, like, f you know, family was on it together yeah. when they used to. You or the contracts. So, remember, yeah. we used to get have contracts. So can I, I, can I like tell that. a story that's going to make me look kind of bad? 
Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah. This is a great We're always idea. Always looking for that to happen. <laughs> so I was I was a pretty tech forward guy back then, uh-huh. right? So I had the Palm Pilot, you know, and <laughs> BlackBerry. <laughs> yeah, was it BlackBerry like, exist? Like before, most people had the had Palm Pilots. The Palm Pilots and Blackberries are very different. But yeah, but was the Palm Pilot? It didn't have cell service, right? Correct. So so this was before you really had smartphones. So okay. we still had the flip phones. Like right? the yeah. coolest ones were the Nextel ones that had mm-hmm. the push to talk, uh, walkie talkie feature. Yeah, um, the, we wore them on our belt clip still. But so I still, so I had, a, still I had like the Palm Trail, which was the, the the best Palm Pilot. I really loved it. It was great. And so when you started getting your smartphones, right, that the iPhone starts to come out, and you have everybody else has their knockoffs, which with touch screens that aren't nearly as good. Um, I, I couldn't get an iPhone because there's no way I could afford it. Um, but I had a a smartphone of sorts that wasn't as good. It was it was, it was cool, but. So a guy who I knew from my past yeah. reaches out to me out of the blue. Hey, you know, I'm going to be in town. You want to sit down and talk? I'm like, yeah, sure. It'd be good to catch up. So we sit down and we talk. And, you know, lo and behold, he's part of an Amway offshoot, mm-hmm. right? You guys know what Amway is, right? Uh, like a pyramid type scheme. Well, place? don't call, don't okay, call no. it that. They get okay, really never mind. Mad. I'm sorry. It's, it's a, a it's bad. a it's a multi level multi level marketing. marketing. Right. Okay. So dimensional triangle. Now I want to say this: the the Amway family, yeah, and and the DeVos family who started Amway together, right? Yeah. Um, the DeVosses and the Van Andels, uh, tons of money. Got a lot of people in, started in business that did really well. So they did a lot of good, okay. and they did a lot of good for Grand Rapids. But that said, uh, it, it can be when you're a pastor, people love to get you into their downline yeah. because you know so many people, <laughs> right? And so I often living in West Michigan, oh. we get a lot of people coming to me saying, "Hey, be part of my downline," right? And I'm like, "I just don't do it." So, anyways, this guy contacts me out of the blue. I don't enjoy selling to my right. family and friends. He's he's not an Amway. <laughs> But he's in like a, an offshoot, a kind of a, a, a pretend Amway, and he wants me to get in. And you know, part of the whole spiel is you give the person a gift. That's how you you want it. You give them a gift. Yeah, but what does Amway sell? I don't even know what oh, they man. sell. Oh man, what don't they sell? Okay, so I didn't know they, that. They, they actually they sell oh. household products, <laughs> right? They sell household products, like cleaning okay. products, cleaning all products. that kind okay. of stuff. But what they really sell is membership in a business. I mean, okay. the whole thing is you gotta you know get your downline going. Okay. Anyway. So this guy, he's going to give me a gift, right? To kind of make me feel like, oh, I should get in his business. He gives me an iPhone. That's a pretty nice gift. Right. It's his old one, right? He's upgrading. He's upgrading. upgrading. But back then, an iPhone's an iPhone. Okay. So he gives me an iPhone. What year is this? 2009? It was probably eight, maybe. Oh, 2008. Eight or nine. Okay. I mean, yeah. And I'm like, wow, thank you. That's that's awesome. And then he gives me the spiel. I want you to get into my, you know. Yeah. And I'm like. Thanks, I don't do that. Yeah. But I kept the phone. Oh, well, I thought he was going to ask phone. for the phone back. But he, you know, the thing is, is then, you know, it becomes this thing. He keeps calling me. Are you going to join? Are you going to join? And I'm like, no, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. And I felt bad because, you know, but, you know, a gift is a gift, right? A, a gift yeah. with strings People, attached is not a gift. Not right. A gift. Well, that's, so how, that's gift, how I got my first can, iPhone. Yeah. Yeah. And I never got into his downline. You could, look at all these years. You could have been, you know, had so many people underneath you. I could, you have, making, I could, could have be, a huge pyramid by now. <laughs> you could. Your yeah. pyramid could be <laughs> enormous. All right. Well, let's get into some questions this morning. Uh, we is this was this the second? This was the second sermon on the minor prophets. Right? Second sermon on the minor prophets. First on a specific minor prophet. First yep. on a specific because minor last prophet. week was just yep. kind of an introductory. Right. Okay. So I think this is a really good question here because it's, it's talking about Gomer and it relates to all of us. But uh, yeah. so on Sunday you were talking about Gomer and you said that Gomer is a picture of of all of us of everyone. Um, yeah. Do you think that everyone is unfaithful to God? Is that where you're going with the that statement? Yeah, cool. Okay. So yeah. So before we get there, let's talk a little bit about Gomer. Yeah. That's a funny name. It right? is a funny name. <laughs> and and her dad's name is De Blame. De Blame. <laughs> right. Who's De Blame? But that that thing is I, I in one of the services as I was reading yeah. it, I thought of that joke. <laughs> yeah. Right. Is I and, and I wrestled with do I do I drop this dad joke right here? Right. Like <laughs> yes, who have. who would who would give his daughter a name like Gomer? He's who's the to, only who's one to blame. blame. He's the only one to blame. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so Gomer, yeah. So you know, Gomer is of course in the story of yeah. Hosea, the unfaithful but, wife. But people back then would probably have no idea that Gomer is a funny sounding name. 
probably would just thought it was normal. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, like to blame. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Also the, um, the, the, having to constantly throughout the sermon say Gomer Gomer, and Hosea led me to be fighting myself the whole time to not say Homer. Yeah. Right. But I actually did say it once, I think in one of the services. All right. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. So the question is, well, the, the question is, you know, do we think that, you know, Ho- Gomer is a representation of all oh, of us because I did yeah. say that at one point in mm-hmm. the sermon. I, I said, you know, you're not Hosea, you're Gomer. Yes. Um, and so, do but, I really think? Well, the question was, do you think that everyone is unfaithful to God? Right, because that's what Gomer was. Okay. Gomer was okay. unfaithful. Yeah. That's that's her, her characteristic. So, in saying everyone is Gomer, I'm essentially okay. saying, gotcha. uh, everyone's unfaithful to God. And, and my answer is, yes. No. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> <Just> kidding. <laughs> yes, of course, because um, I think I think we struggle with that because we don't necessarily understand what faithfulness to God actually yeah. is, right? Um, if I if I said to, to my wife, "Look, you get to be as long as you're faithful to me mm-hmm. five days a week. Yeah, you can do whatever you want the other two. Mm-hmm. Two days of unfaithfulness. People mm-hmm. will look at me and say you're a fool." Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe we're moving into this modern age where people. <laughs> no, are doing I, that I more still think more, people but, would look at you as a fool. Yeah, I, I just think people would say that's that's ridiculous. It's still, the standard is still faithfulness. But six days of faithfulness would be good, right? <laughs> no, no, I don't. Right. I don't think that anyone would would think that. How about how about six days and twelve hours of faithfulness? No, I don't think that would six days. I don't and, think that would work. Six days and twenty three hours. No, I don't think that's, that would right. Work. And that's the I don't point. Think that would right? Work, yeah. Is that you know unfaithfulness is unfaithfulness even even if it's just a little bit and yeah. so we, I, I feel like though it's it has to do with the commitment right the significant the more significant the commitment mm-hmm. is the more important the faithfulness becomes yes uh, that's true like is it important that i be faithful to um michigan state or like if, if someday i say i'm not rooting for them anymore yeah nobody's gonna be like oh what a terrible person right like, some oh, okay. michigan state fans might. yeah i know right they might <laughs> right so if i give up on the lions right so yeah because there's no there's no really significant commitment but we do have big commitments in life and i i guess i might argue that your commitment to god whether you choose to make it or not really is the most com- important commitment in your life because he's your creator mm-hmm. right and at the end he's the final judge yeah and, and so whether you're someone who said i commit my life to him or hasn't done that faithfulness to him is still really important because he is the ultimate judge he's the creator he's a s- sustainer yeah he's the provider all that stuff well it's an important question to answer right yeah how do we get here, right? Because there's a lot of implications to that. And if you don't make any type of commitment, it's essentially making right. a commitment somewhere. Yeah. So who, like in life, who am I accountable to? I'm accountable to the government of the United States, right? I never agreed to that. Yeah. Right? I was... <laughs> <laughs> Would you have agreed to that? Just putting that on record. I never agreed to that. No, I mean, but I was born here. Yeah. I'm a citizen here. So I'm accountable to them. Yeah. So, but if you're like, you know, so sometimes you go to uh, like a baseball game and on the ticket, it says just by purchasing the ticket, Mm -hmm. you abide to all of these rules. Yeah. You know, it's kind of, kind of similar in the sense of like, if you accept U S currency and you know, other, like other things in this, you have to take part in society. You right. Know, if, if you, you want to participate take in society, society you, have then, to, yes. you have to contribute to right. society. And so then obviously the point that you're making yeah. is we are making a commitment, even though we are not. You have right? a point there, yes, Steve. Yes, I do. It's a, I but, did, I, but I didn't wear a hat. A hat. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes. Is that if we participate in God's creation, we are, you are taking part in it. I mean, yeah, yeah, we are, we are intelligent enough to, to be able to say there is a lot of design in this right. world. Where so, did that design come from? So this is the underlying truth when Jesus says, you know, render to Caesar. Yeah. Right. So the people come yeah. to him and they say, no, that's we, a really good point. Should there. we pay taxes to Caesar? Yeah. And that their their question is just really you know base level well, political it's funny. I, question. I, I, taxes had to be as of a hot issue back then as it is today. Oh, I would I would why imagine. Why wouldn't they be? Yeah, that's what I mean. So that's a very politically charged statement. I, I mean, tax, you know, so taxes are, are are a horrible thing, <laughs> yeah. right? I earn this money, I work for it, and I have to give it away. Yeah. Now, but but Jesus' answer is great, right? Because his first answer is, um, who's 
image is on the coin. Yeah. And they're like, Caesar's. So he's like, okay, then give to Caesar what's Caesar's. And, and what he's saying is, like you just pointed out, you mm-hmm. have this monetary system. Yeah. And you're all willing to use it. Yeah, so because it's all, beneficial to everybody. You're all reaping the benefits of the Roman Empire. Yeah. And, you know, and, and beyond that, you've got the roads. Yeah. And whether you like the soldiers around you or not, you have peace, right? Yeah. So you have all these benefits you're reaping. And so Jesus is saying, look, if you're reaping the benefits of living in this, then then render to Caesar what is Caesar's. But he doesn't stop there. And, and we don't preach the second part yeah. very often, <laughs> right? And yeah. render to God what is God's. Yeah. So are you breathing oxygen? Well, where'd yeah. that come from, mm-hmm. right? Do you, do, do you use the body that you're... Did you you make this body, yeah. right? Did you create this? You, know, you, you, you were born, you were put into it, and here you are. If you're going to use all that, then you need to render to God what is God's. Mm-hmm. And so, if you don't do that, right. and the then more, you're being unfaithful. The, the more gifts that God gives you, the more we should be thankful yeah. and give back to him. Right. Yep. Absolutely. So, there you go. Okay. I'm not sure we ever actually answered the exact question, but I think we skirted around <laughs> we did. it enough we to did. make it pretty clear. Yes. Yeah. So you you I, you answered in the beginning. Yes. Right. I mean, that's as simple. <laughs> yeah. It's as simple as that. Um, but great great discussion with us. So um, this is one of my favorite questions to answer here because I think and I would probably I think I can phrase it in a couple different ways but um, the second one is why does God seem so mean sometimes in in the Old Testament and and like why does I I've also heard this why why did like God you know like there's a lot of wars and battles and death and things so like why did God purposely send soldiers to kill people you know like why is death and destruction so much part of the Old Testament and why does he seem like this angry God? Yeah. So you said this is your favorite question to answer. So have at it. <laughs> yes. So, so I think that for, for one, we live in a broken world, right? I think that's where you start. Is it, um, you know, there's, there is, and it, you can place the blame on us because th- we have free will and we're able to choose to do good or bad, um, that, Sometimes people choose to do bad things, and therefore, um, you know, some of those choices are on us. And when when some of those choices are on us, some of those choices can also be on others, right? So um, there's certain hold, things. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Everything you said up to this point is just patently obvious. Yep. yep. But there are going to be people who are going to be like, I yep. don't think I agree with this guy. Yeah. But that's you know, if, if you can't take everything you said to this point and acknowledge that it's true, you're right. then you're really not going to like what comes next. Yeah. All right, so keep going. Yeah. So so within the Old Testament, we also, you know, we have a lot of things that are going on that aren't ordained by God necessarily. There's people living outside the bounds of what God actually called them to do. Mm-hmm. You know, like God wanted there to be peace. Um, God didn't want a king to be in place in um, Israel, right? He didn't want those things to happen and they happened and that led them down the road where bad choice compounded. And then also, I mean, we see times where, you know, God has given them over and over and over again, a chance to change. So like Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Um, God's judgment came upon them, but he's like, you know, find one, you know, find, find a hundred people, find 10, you know, like just find someone and we can redeem this. Um, so we see an immense amount of redemption before judgment happens. Um, so, you know, maybe you can add to that, but you know, that's where I'm going with yeah. the answer to the question. No, I, I think that's a pretty good answer. Yeah. I'll, I'll add a couple of things. Uh-huh. Uh, my starting question for anybody who asked me that question, yeah. you know, why is God so mean in the old Testament? My, my starting point would always be to say, um, do you want the right answer yeah. or do you want the answer that yeah. feels good? Exactly. Right. Yeah. Because if all you're looking for is an answer that's going to make you feel better about this, yeah. I don't have that answer mm-hmm. um, because in, this is, this is in lo- this is life and you don't always have a feel good answer in life. Yeah. Right. So that, that said, let's, let's, let's give the right answer. Yeah. Right. And I think you laid it out really well. People make choices. Choices have consequences. People suffer because of bad choices. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah. I would add into that. Um, our understanding and our our view of death really makes it difficult for us to have these kinds of conversations because we all think of death as like final and ending and yeah. the absolute worst thing possible. Well, be, be partly because 
of the pain it causes, right? Sure. We're generally trying to avoid pain and go towards pleasure. Yes, correct. But we're not looking for a feel good no, answer. No, we're not. That's, so that's that, why I'm just saying to, that's, you know, I'm just right. yep, commenting exactly. on that's some of the logic behind that's, it. That's why we have to kind of explode people's idea of death, yeah. right? Well, I think in pain in general, um, in, in difficult times in general, like, yeah, like often when someone has something really bad to happen to them, like we feel sorry for them. We, especially if it's a loved one, you know, it can really change your life. Mm-hmm. And, and ultimately, you know, if you can lean into some of that life's best yeah. lessons are learned through mm-hmm. pain. Yeah. Yeah, Ab- absolutely. We can learn a lot in pain. So, so when God commands people to be killed, yeah, right. And let's just talk about the Canaanites because that's yeah. really the core of where this whole argument comes from. Right. Is that God, God commanded His people to go into Canaan and to wipe out the Canaanites, and people think that's extraordinarily unfair. Yeah. So, um, we all think, well, the Canaanites being killed, that's the worst possible thing, mm-hmm. right? Because death is the worst possible thing. And I would raise, I don't even have to bring God into the picture to raise an argument to say, would the people who the Canaanites were killing say that killing the Canaanites was the worst possible thing, right? Yeah. Because the Canaanites were horrible people, awful, wicked, vile people. They, you know, they did terrible things to those around them and to each other. And so it's like, well, would would they say that it's the worst thing? They actually might say it's the best thing. Yeah. Right. And so there we realize that our human ability to like someone needs to stop this. Right. Our, our human ability to determine what is and is not the best thing doesn't exist. We can't do that because what we can't see is we can't see the broader context. We can't see um, unintended consequences down the road. We can't see what's come before. And, and so when we place ourselves in this position of trying to say, well, that's the best thing that could happen. That's we're, we're being fools. Mm-hmm. And I actually just read someone the other day who was saying, you know, a, a, about a, a person who got ill. And essentially they said, you know, if, if God thinks the best thing for that person is for them to die, then God doesn't know what he's doing. Like, okay, you don't understand the concept of God here, right? Is that the the only person that can determine what is and is not the best thing is the person who has the knowledge of everything and can see into the future and can see into the past and know all those things and tie them all together and say, based on all of this, here's the best thing. Yeah. And in God's infinite knowledge, what he said is the best thing is we probably need to get rid of the Canaanites. Yeah. Now, interestingly, he told Abraham he was going to do this, right? He, he, Abraham has, has this dream, and you know I think it's in maybe Genesis, I don't know, 14, 15, somewhere in there. Abraham has this dream, and in this dream, God says to him, look, your, your descendants are, are going to have this land, but first, they're going to go down to Egypt, and they're going to be enslaved in Egypt for 400 years. And the whole point is that that 400 years is a time for all of the Canaanites' wickedness to, to have its full effect. Now, they're not there without a witness of God, right? Because Abraham had lots of interactions with lots of people from other countries with Canaanites, yeah. right? Who, who would have known Abraham's God. So Abraham's family had this, this witness. They weren't perfect, but they had this witness. So when they left Canaan and went to Egypt, there was an understanding and knowledge of who God was, but that was suppressed as Romans 1 says. And, and when one generation suppresses the knowledge of God, essentially they've condemned the following generations mm-hmm. to not know God. Yeah. And, and that's horrible and that's terrible, but that's not God's fault. That's that generation's fault. So, I mean, a, a, apply really important principle here of yeah. how we pass the faith on to the next generation. But all, all that to say, we often hold God responsible for something that we shouldn't hold him responsible for. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. Next question here. Um, so we're kind of switching off this topic of okay. the sermon, unless there's anything else that you wanted to say about, about the sermon. No, we got another week in Hosea to come. So awesome. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, falls kicking off here, right? A lot of new things happening. We were doing, you know, the first game in the beginning. Um, so what do people who are connected to the gathering need to know about fall? What things yeah. do they need to know? Okay. Well, yeah. Anything you want to tell? I do. There's, I know there's a, there's quite a few things coming up at the fall and some things that I know that we're ready to announce some stuff, but there's other things I know that are coming as well. All right. Um, so the first thing is if you aren't in a group, uh, get in a group, uh, fall launch for groups will be September 24th. Uh, so that's, 
you know, officially fall, right? Because yep. it's in, it's when are, feels when are, early, but when are you going to start talking about groups? Um, I believe I mean, you just did. Yeah, I I believe it's the last Sunday of this month was when we're going to release a lot of information. We've already right. started talking about groups, um, and can people find out anything about groups right now if they yes, wanted to? They, they can. They can find out. Um, you, you know, like so, not necessarily. Um, find out information about the, the groups that exist currently, but they can get on our list so they'll be the first ones to know. Right when that information yeah. is released, I'm going to immediately send it out to all those people. And I have I have a pretty large list. I want to say I have 60 or 70 people who have expressed interest in groups. Um, wow. So if you want to follow the crowd, yeah, this is, this is a good place to follow yeah. the crowd. So they've been marking it on their connection card. Hey, give me more information all about right, group cool. and then you get a message for me saying, hey, I got you on the list. You're going to yeah. be the first to hear. And you hope to launch how many groups? Uh, we're, so we're going to launch seven to eight groups this awesome. year. You may not necessarily see all of those because some of those are um, groups that may go to a specific demographic or audience or something right. like that. But yeah. there's there's going to be four or five that will mm -hmm. be like widely released. Yeah, yeah, because we're, we're starting to launch kind of like pilot type groups. Yeah. Where we're, we're just trying different things. Yeah, we're trying a lot of different things. So you well, have a group that you, and, it's, it's more of an experiment. Well, and, well, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily call it an experiment per se, but I would say the cool thing has been like we didn't necessarily pursue those things. Yeah. People came to us and said, hey, I'd really like to start a group. I'm passionate about this group. People say what some of them are um, are we allowed to do that yet? yeah no absolutely so like we one of them is like a young adult group yeah one of them is a young adult I'm super group. excited about that i one. am as well yep. i've been making some introductions already like some of that and and the reason some of these groups may not be widely publicized is because they're mm -hmm. kind of like more to a specific right. demographic and we really yeah. want to make you know meaningful connections in that right. now is that group for people like me um, i think of myself as a young adult i'm sorry no it's no. not okay <laughs> Um, you know, that's that's I was just having a conversation with someone at starting point about what does young adult mean? And I said, great question, because I don't even think the young adults have a consensus of what young adults mean, because you could have someone who's, you know, young and single. You could have someone who's young and dating. You could have someone who's young and married. You could have someone who's young with kids. They're all completely in a different space. Um, but our hope w would be that anyone within those categories I just mm -hmm. said would feel comfortable enough to go to yeah. this this group. And then maybe we launch groups from there. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, cool. do you know what Simple Simon is? No. Anybody in the room know what Simple Simon is? For no. All right. So you're a young adult if you don't know. Oh, okay. There you go. It was this game. You know, it was like a, it's like a big plastic circle and it had four colored lights. Oh, I, that's what I was thinking. I just I, called it Simon. Yeah, I just called it Simon too. Oh, okay. Yeah. I never heard Simple I Simon. I that all the time. Maybe, maybe it, was, it wasn't called Simple <laughs> okay. Simon anymore. It was uh, that and Bop It. You remember that? Yeah. Twist well, it. Well, twist it. Suck it. Bop it. Yep. Throw it. That was one of them. <laughs> Put it in all the trash right. can. So groups, that's, that's <laughs> one big thing that's coming this fall. B big things. And obviously I'm very passionate about groups because myself and Alyssa yep. are, are the driving force yeah. for that. So yeah, yeah, excited about it. We've had a lot of interest. Um, I know, I bet this is going to be our best group launch ever. I'm going to say it. I think it's going to be the best group launch in gathering any history. any church ever. Well, I wouldn't go that in far. But ever. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, but. Best at the gathering. Best best at the ga in the, ga the history of the gathering. Wow. I think it will be the best group launch that we've right. had. Cool. We'll see. We shall see. Yeah, I, I think can't that's predict awesome. the future. But <laughs> You're not setting yourself yeah. up with really high so we expectations. Got, we've, got, <laughs> yeah, true. we've got some fun things coming up like that we generally do in the fall, like uh, we're going to have some bonfire nights. Yeah, bonfire yeah, nights, uh, worship barn. nights. We're going to have a worship night in October. So those are coming up, and yeah. you know, that'll be fun. Uh, I, you know, I would say, if, if somebody said to me, what's the most important thing people need to be thinking about as we head into the fall? Yeah. I would actually direct their attention to the challenges that we're doing. Yeah. Our monthly mm -hmm. challenges. So I think... This month's challenge, it, it, it maybe it f doesn't feel as significant because it's just three times a day you yeah. pray. I, I actually think it's really important and it's really foundational to where we want to go as a church. Yeah. So uh, one of the reasons our, our challenge this month, by the way, if you don't know what the challenge is this month, the challenge is every day pray three times that God will stir your heart for those who don't know him. Mm. Right. That's it. So it's a pretty simple challenge, you know, set aside three times a day to pray and just pray a really simple prayer. You know, God, stir my heart for the people who don't know you. 
um, and then be open to see what happens. But I, I feel like this challenge is really foundational for where we're headed yeah. because it's it's this idea of there are there are there are attributes of maturity, and and we always want to push everybody who's in the gathering towards spiritual maturity. But sometimes it you, you can say, well, you need to be more spiritual mature, so do this. But that's not really how spiritual maturity works. Uh, spiritual maturity works as you are changed from the inside out and you're changed by God. Yeah. And then that works its way out. And so, you know, our challenge next month is going to be really critical and I, I'm excited about it. But our challenge this month is really preparing us for that. Yeah. So I would say pay, pay close attention to the challenges. E- even if you've not been doing the challenge this month, we're going to give you a special dispensation today. All right. So if you watch the podcast and you see this, you can take a magnet, even if you haven't been doing the Mm. challenge up to this point. If for the rest of the month, you'll pray three times every day that God will stir your heart for those who don't know him. Limited time. So here we go. Special dispensation. (laughs) So we're going to take the the, the water and (laughs) there we go. All right. I don't know if you got it on the one. What if the camera had just like fried right then and there? (laughs) Yeah. So now we're a, not a non-denominational church. We're a multi-denominational we're a mul- church. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we uh, What's the difference? had several comments yeah. this week about how we're actually interdenominational. Ooh, inter. Yeah. I like multi better, I think. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. So that's, that's, that's what I would say about the fall. Yeah. Yep. So then what would you say is the most critical thing that people do this fall? Sit next to each other. <laughs> there, yeah, yes. that's oh, my for. goodness. <laughs> it, it's... Been very full, right? Yeah. Um, this mm-hmm. last Sunday wasn't too terrible, but it was busy enough where if you walked into the worship center while people are worshiping, that you know you might have looked around and be like, "Man, it's it feels very full in here, right?" It it can if you walk into the service about five to ten minutes late, yeah. And people are standing up to sing. It can be really difficult to find a seat. Yeah, because you really can't look down to the front to see if there's seats down there, and you're looking around, and you know. So it, it really, it really is helpful if you will slide in mm-hmm. to, to the centers of the row, be willing to sit next to people, so that someone who's coming in can say, "Oh, look, there's two seats on the aisle. Yes, I can go sit there, or yeah. there's one seat on the aisle. That's, sit that to, really sit is to the helpful. middle if you can. Yep, you know, and yep. if and if you can't sit towards the front. Yeah, <laughs> yep, sit towards um, the front. Yeah. If you're going to sit in the back, at least sit in the middle of the back. You're right. <laughs> yep. Yep. That, yeah. That's the number one thing for the fall. Right. Number one thing, uh, space, right? Yep. Help us with, with making space for new people yeah. to hear and know it's, Jesus. It's, honestly, it's, it's a chance to be generous. Yeah. Right. To just, just be generous with where you sit by, by leaving room for others. Yep. Okay. Right. Well, I think we should end it on that note of, right. of the things that we need to do in fall. So thanks everyone for, for joining us. And Matt, we didn't talk to you at all. So just go back to yeah, the, we did. He, at the beginning. Oh he yeah. He talked the, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't talk to him, but no, he, he talked, talked, to, us. He talked, he talked to, us. to us. We tried to ignore him. <laughs> we listened. All right. Have a great rest of your day. See you.